Welcome to the Toonami Faithful Podcast, episode number 60, George Christich Saves the Day. Remember fans when we told you we were going to be off for another two weeks? We lied. The Toonami Faithful Podcast starts now. Hey everybody, welcome to the Toonami Faithful Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Argumetto, and with me tonight is... Paul Pascrillo, the founder of TsunamiFaithful.com. And... ASM Rider, Rail Maddox. And... Daniel Sherlock, webmaster of And before we get into the show this week, note that this show has been recorded early. Because uh, I am out of the country right now, so we recorded this show early. We don't know what the trending is, we don't know what a couple of things are, but we do have the ratings, so... It'll be somewhat like a regular show, so we'll get into that. But first and foremost, please rate and review and subscribe on iTunes and Podomatic, and we'll be on Stitcher soon, I promise. We'll figure that out. Especially iTunes. iTunes is the important one. Uh, please follow us on Facebook. Please, or like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Toonami Podcast. Follow our Tumblr page at ToonamiFaithfulOfficial.tumblr.com. And you can see all the old episodes of the show at podcast.tunamifaithful.com. And I think I got everything, right? We're doing with this without an agenda, so I think um, I got everything. <laughs> yeah, I think you got everything. Cool. Yeah. Yay! Yay. Um, First we've try. Heard, Jose, is, Jose has told me that we've heard from a lot of you about uh, so far, and obviously this has only been like, what, two days since yeah, the other podcast? it's been a couple of days, out. yeah. <laughs> So we've heard from a lot of you saying that we want to do a Kickstart, that you guys want us to do a Kickstarter. Um, please keep that coming in. Uh, use the hashtag Toonami Talk back and let us know. Um, the idea that we're kind of throwing out there right now, and at least in my head is a good idea, is we'd like to do like a huge Kickstarter. And what we mean by that is now that we know we can get into some of these bigger cons, we'd like to um, try to do a big Kickstarter where – yeah, we'll be able to get Jose a new camera or repair the one that he has. <laughs> or, or both. Or both. Whatever. We really need a new camera. Um, but basically <laughs> what we would do. <laughs> um, you greedy little bastard. And a new little computer. Little Frankly, I need a lot of new shit. To be honest with you, I, I, if we have enough money, I would probably – if we had enough money from whatever con, huge cons we went to, I probably would be like, okay, here's some money for a computer. Get it. We need it for such things as <coughs> geeky reviews um, <laughs> and other stuff like that. Yeah, so, where's um, my fucking money for my alcohol, bitch? Yeah, shut the fuck up, Darrell. Anyways. Um, That's coming out of the Kickstarter too. Don't worry. Here, let me let me let me put a piece of paper. Let me rub it. <laughs> Darrell, let me... I mean, obviously, you guys, we're gonna we're still gonna yeah. pay a lot of stuff out of pocket. That's just yes. we always Tra- do that. But if you could help us out a little bit, and again, it's I don't want to I don't want to run this into the ground too much because we're gonna sound like we're begging again. And we are. <laughs> Alms for the poor. But yeah, uh, for just, the poor, sir. Just a little aid, and we'll we'll uh, we'll be sure to keep bringing you great content, man. I mean, right. if you saw our Otakon coverage, I'm actually particularly very proud of that. So, um, yes, and are. as and again, if you don't want to just give money to us for like a Kickstarter, um, you can always go to tsunamifaithful.com or tsunamifaithful.bandcamp.com. Um, we have the Nerdcore Absolution CD there that you can purchase. Uh, that will go towards obviously, you know, us as well as if you buy the T-shirt, uh, which is now twelve dollars. Um, I lowered that so that way we can start getting funding for more of these cons, including New York Comic Con. Equipment. New York <laughs> Comic Con. Yes, I know New York Comic Con that's coming up because Daniel and Matt are starting to go. We need money. Yeah. We need money. I'm like, Don't worry. We're, we're going on our own uh, <laughs> travel expenses because, well, we already have it planned. And we all yeah. kind of like, yeah. Well, so, well, see, Click gotta... on ads. Click <laughs> on ads. Let me. All I'm going to say is fuck that shit. I'm about to sit off and rob a fucking bank. Oh, God. Anyways. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. Are you Great, drunk? We need the Kickstarter for Darrell's bail bond. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Just, but anyways, just... um, we we should talk about New York Comic Con uh, briefly before we get into uh, a little bit. Well, the only news that we have this, on yeah, this the podcast. The only news we have is literally right now <laughs> ratings. Uh, <laughs> ratings. Um, <laughs> lovely ratings. So we don't even have the ratings comparison. God, we got to go find that. 
a little bit of backstory, and Daniel will obviously explain more of this because he's been doing it more than I have. Um, Daniel came to me and said, let's try and see if we can get into New York Comic Con. Yeah, me! And um, him and Matt, which is our other editor, love Matt, love you. Um, Fuck you, Matt. <laughs> see you him resources tomorrow, sweetums. Oh, God. Anyways, um, so we were trying to get into that, um, and I, I will be honest. I'll be completely honest. I didn't think that our website, you know, because we've only been around for, what, a year? So, I mean, it's been a little bit more than a year, but, I mean, we've only been really around for a year. So, And, like, Oticon, the reason we used Adult Swim Central, which a lot of people don't understand why we did that, was because um, we use them because they've been around for – and I. Don't kill me, John, if I say this wrong, if you're listening to this, but I believe 10 years 10, might 11. be 11. Something but like that. yeah, so that's the reason why we use that as our in, because obviously they've been a long, they've been around a long time. And Otakon and Jose, you'd have to explain that a little Otakon bit more. Otakon has a two year rule yeah. where you, your site has to have existed. And John basically was like, yeah, we can totally collaborate on this. Um, obviously, we went as representatives of Adultum Central, not com. But we still put our logo on shit because we put our logo on shit. Yes, we do. <laughs> but they, we put their logo on shit, too. So Yeah, which was first right. than ours. Yes, so, because uh, <laughs> more important. Their logo is way more important than ours. <laughs> it's the uh, truth. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank John. But anyways, uh, getting back to New York Comic Con. Um, so... Pretty much, I got an email one day from, I think it, I want to say it was both of you, you and Matt, both of you were like, um, oh my god, we got in. I was like, oh my god, we got in. I'm like, um, and, I, and I'm looking at my phone. I think I was at work and I'm like, first thought when I got the a email. fucking joke. I'm like, this has got to be a fucking joke. And then you sent me an email. I'm like, oh my god. Daniel's, oh my god. Still, Daniel's still fucking with me. What did he do? What did he drop? <laughs> what kind of email did he do? Is this a virus? <laughs> but anyways, um, I'll let Daniel take it from here. He can explain what happened. Well, uh, mostly me and Matt were like, oh, New York Comic Con's coming up quick. We're like, let's apply for press. So I gave him a bunch of stats really quick and said, I, I didn't see any rules where we had a B2 years or anything. So I was like, let's do it. I sure, I'm pretty sure we can get in. And um, they didn't get us back. They didn't. It was uh, a month, was wasn't it? They didn't reply to us on the hear back date, uh, but I emailed him, uh, the manager for the press, and we were in. Uh, we got our confirmation uh, two days after, and I'm just like, ah, it's nice to see a real confirmation email. Because <laughs> I was like, I really hope he's telling the truth, but I was like, I believe him enough. <laughs> you so just show up, you just show up there. Hey, we're from tsunamifaithful.com. Get the fuck out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? Obviously, I thought you were black. Oh. <laughs> so, so there's only one token black guy in here that's drunk. Hey, motherfucker, I told you token American. You best get it right. <laughs> yeah, and he's not even on this podcast this week. I mean, Jim's not I know, here. Right? Oh, yep. <laughs> I know, right? Love you, Jim. Fuck you, so, Jim. We're, I'm, very, I'm very excited. Um, I haven't been to New York Comic Con at all. Well, I will say that I'm... Uh, honestly, like I'm, I'm very happy that that just means that our site is, oh god, <laughs> that our site is really bad. Tongue tied, bitch. I am tongue tied. I was tongue tied when that happened. I was. Like, <laughs> That's what she said. I'm like, wait, wait, what the fuck just happened? I'm like, near what? I'm like, our our, our sure. New York Comic Con is one of the biggest cons out there, and we kind of got in really <laughs> like we applied early. Well. Uh, now that we know that we can get in, I'm definitely going to be going next year. That is that is going to happen. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Somehow I will make my way down there, and I will be there. I'm not going. Fuck I'm you, Jose. Not, going. not um, going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as much as I love going to New York, I'm not a fan of New York Comic Con. <laughs> I staffed it one year, and I'm like, uh, never again. Yeah, their their uh, staff is interesting at best. No, the staff is great. Yeah, staff is great, but it's just such a big con to staff. It's like, oh my yeah. god, it's quite large. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the only place worse is probably San Diego Comic Con, which I'm done with San Diego Comic Con for a couple of years. <laughs> I'm okay, done. Man. I've been I've it's... been there too many times. 
Uh, yeah, so this this will be exciting. Um, we have some guests that we really want to do. Uh, one that's already approved, but I'm not saying who it is just yet. No, don't be saying anything right now. Don't you be going teasing um, us like that. I, I will say that we... One thing I can say is that we don't... Because Viz and Funimation and all the tsunami related ones out there haven't really announced anything for New York Comic Con yet... We don't have anybody confirmed for that yet, but we're still not going to tell you when that happens. <laughs> or the guess we have confirmed already. Yeah, basically, yes, <laughs> basically, don't expect too much anime stuff, because New York Comic Con is not the it's, place for that. They are having anime guests this year, so we don't even know who is coming as right. of yet. Right, so we'll figure that out. We'll, we'll let you guys know when we want to let you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be basically like... Um, Pretty much is going to be a tsunamifaithful.com slash geekyinc.com thing because obviously. Yeah, know, Geeky, get some love after March. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, it's going to have some more love coming up soon, but I can't talk about that yet. I know, uh, right? Uh, basically, anything that we can't that's not tsunami related will show up there. So, pretty much, we will be doing a two. Basically, you'll have to look at two different sites. As we put things out. So I would suggest that you start following at Geeky Inc. on Twitter now. That's G-E-E-K-E-I-N-C. And keep an eye out for what announcements that we make of non tsunami guests. Because there's going to be a lot of them. Or we just won't announce anything and just post it like we always do. Maybe. Yeah, we, and get... We kind of do that. And... and- <laughs> Yes, we do that too, but yeah. you know, whatever. Maybe we'll see. We'll see what we do. Cause this I like one... doing it that way. I don't know. That's me personally. Eh, I didn't whatever. even tell it's you about Shinichiro Watanabe. <laughs> I didn't even I tell know. Paul about Shinichiro Watanabe. I kept that one to myself. Oh, but I knew though. I don't know. Jerome was the only one who knew. And Jim, obviously. <laughs> I doesn't see like I hear people who say that they're complaining uh, that we post that. I'm like, but we need to be more than just a Tanami site. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, people need to understand that when we post something, it's going to be, like it, like I said, it's going to be... Otherwise, we won't have any content, and you'll be just looking at ratings, and honestly, that's a boring website to me. Right. Like, like people diversity. were complaining about this, do you need to watch an ABBA interview? I don't know if it was about that, but, it, you know... Are we like... talking about maybe maybe the press conference, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. The well, press... they, need to, they need to understand, too. People need to understand, too, that it's... You know, we also did some stuff, as you noticed, because we were actually allowed to go to that con. So we did a lot of stuff for them to make them understand that, hey, we like you. We want to come back. We want to do this again. You know, Plus, so that I mean, conference it, it, is awesome. Seriously, the Shinichiro Watanabe. He's like he's like God. He's like Japanese God. OK, yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, let me ask you this, Jose. While we're on the subject of cons, will you go to Otakon again next year? Maybe it depends on the guests. Uh, if uh, it's like well, I it, said about it, it yeah, even it, with MomoCon, it, it really depends on the guests. It depends on who's going to be there because we can't we can't do that for every con. Like we just can't. That's oh no, just I was not thinking, a good idea. No, I was thinking of because I would rather <laughs> stay. I would rather stay on the East Coast myself, but um, like I was thinking, like the three cons that we would do is obviously MomoCon. Uh, now that we know that we can be press at New York Comic Con going there, and then obviously um, Otakon. That that would be the only three that I would think of. And Otakon to me, being... Anime Expo. Well, that's Anime Expo, moving. I forgot about that. Way, yeah. Otakon's moving to DC when? 2017. That's not for another four years. Okay. So we still have I lots it was of time earlier. to. No, no, it's not. Uh, okay. Actually, no, I got the press release. <laughs> and I <laughs> never, right. and I never posted it because it was just like. Hey, Otakon's over. I don't need to post this. When's um, <laughs> Anime Expo? Uh, sometime, probably 4th of July weekend, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, somewhere so there. Is that on the East Coast or is that... No, that's in Los Angeles, dude. Come on. Yep. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to go out of the hall. Yeah, I don't want you to come to that one. That one's party time. That one's, that one's get... party time. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> me time. That's oh, when I get to go yeah, right. and work my ass off and then go hang out with Richard Epcar and Christina V again. <laughs> that ship didn't and know. Ellen Stern Epgar, of course. <laughs> well, basically, I'm going to get you in his press so you can go party. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what do Good you job. mean you are going to get me in? I'm going to get myself in. I did it for Otakon and Momocon. But what logo did you use? 
all of them. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All hey. of them. Anyways, uh, we do need to get into the news because it's twelve eighteen, and I want to go watch Ghost in the Shell Arise again. So oh, <laughs> it's not even that good. Let's get into the news right now. From Facebook, Twitter, and the official Toonami Tumblr, this is Toonami News, powered by ToonamiFaithful.com. So, ratings. <clears throat> Bleach did 1,103,000. Naruto did 1,145,000. One Piece, one... Sorry, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> one Piece did nine... <laughs> One Piece did nine. Th- I'm so used to saying million because it's been so many weeks. But okay, <laughs> One Piece did nine th- nine hundred fifty three thousand. Soul Eater did nine hundred and nine thousand. Sword Art Online nine hundred seventeen thousand. IGPX six hundred sixty two thousand. The fuck's wrong with you? Uh, Clone Wars six hundred eighty three thousand. Good job, Clone Wars. Big O season two. Uh, five hundred seventy four thousand. Brotherhood, 563,000. Bebop, 560,000. Inuyasha, 688,000. And Inuyasha finished off the night at 741,000. I know people are looking at that drop-off. I know people are looking at that drop-off. We need to remember, these are reruns at 2.30 in the morning. Like, I know IGPX is, this is the first time it's ever been rerun on television. It's still a rerun at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's two thirty uh, in the morning. So there's there's only so much you're going to be able to get at two thirty. I think I was still drinking at two thirty in the morning. I think I was that, that rating. <laughs> Those ratings at five thirty though. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I haven't actually five thirty. I was probably still drinking. Well, probably. yeah, but because if you think about it though, I know everybody's like, oh, but Inuyasha goes back up. That's because people get up and then turn yeah. on the TV. Brush the teeth, wipe their ass. I know people are always like, oh, Bebop brings down the ratings. I'm like, because it's 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, but it's been, I I, I yeah. really think that it needs to have a little bit of a rest, dude. But it's like, 4.30 in the morning. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Just put Ghost in the Shell there. Why not? What's it's what going to do? It's fine for this time slot. You know I mean? No, it's doing fine for its time slot. And Ghost in the Shell, again, they have perpetual rights. They can air that whenever the hell they want. That's what I'm saying. Bebop so and Brotherhood are going to run out eventually, so I'd rather they just run the shit out of those until the contracts you think lapse. they're going to rerun yeah, Brotherhood? But, yeah, but... Um, Brotherhood, I don't, I don't know what's going on with Brotherhood. But it's I, I, I can say that... In the morning. <laughs> That's I can't say that Cowboy that. is... But I isn't mean, their rights going to be like for years to come, though? Like, We don't know how long that contract lasts. We have no idea. And I would just like... Be like if it were months. me, I would put on <laughs> the shows that we eventually will drop. Yeah. At those well, times. Yeah, um, but like I, like I said to you, man, I think like... I honestly think that this would be the perfect time where Funimation has just acquired those rights to Cowboy Bebop and the HD tapes that they have. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. We don't know when that's going to happen. No, I understand. Right now, they're still dealing with Bondi. Yeah, I know. I understand that, but it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be released in 2014. Is from what I saw the other day. The Blu-ray, but who knows what TV rights say? I would say that they. uh, I would hope that they would have those along with them. That would kind of be. I don't think the switch would happen. No, it wouldn't happen right away. No way. Just if it happens soon. at all, yeah. that's true. Like, I mean, like I said, I mean, it depends. On I, the kind of I right think the first to go would be Full Metal Brotherhood. <laughs> yeah, Brotherhood is more likely to be dropped first. Yeah, than Bebop. Then, than Bebop. Um, but that being said, you know, if it were me, I would just take off a. If we're really like, oh man, let's, we need more variety of shows. Drop a, a thirty minutes of Inuyasha and put Ghost in the Shell in there. Other than that, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the thing is, the reason they the reason they've kept that though is because like they wanted to. Well, a it's doing really well at that time slot, and b like two of them is doing really well at that time slot. So why not just keep them? I mean, yeah, I see your point, but also it's five o'clock in the morning. I feel like that's when people are turning on TVs and watching. So well, then, I mean, in that in that aspect, then just move Cowboy to five and put Ghost in the Shell at four thirty then. Why not? Or, or a new I mean, show. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, it doesn't my, really matter where you no, put No, don't them. put a new show. Don't put a new show. No, 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 no. No, that's that's no. suicide. That is suicide right there, yeah. 
Hey guys, Attack on Titans is premiering at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Funimation well, appreciates move, that. They can move things down, obviously, but yeah. if they want to move anything else down. But it's it's hard. I mean, this, this schedule is locked right now. Even, even Jason, when, when they were doing the... Uh, the AMA there the a couple of weeks ago they um, pretty much had said he had said that one of the misconceptions is how they set up the schedule so it's you know for them you know we might see this huge drought from cowboy but they just see well we don't really care about that time slot you know I'm pretty sure it's we don't care about the time slot. But it's probably not in the morning. At, no, probably not. Uh, anything past three o'clock is pretty much go. Well, yeah. I, I believe, and Jose, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I believe they told us that up to oh, I want to say I, I thought it was three, but I think it's two. Adults they'd look at t- between twelve and two for their advertising, and then after that, they don't really care. I thought. Kinda. I, I mean, that might change I, now with the two a.m. slot kind of kicking ass and taking names. Right, and the same thing with uh, Star Wars being there at three. I mean, they well, are promoting yeah. crap out of that. They're not. They put out one promo. Come down. Um, well, oh, when they, before it came <laughs> out, they promoted yeah, it. I apologize. It, that was over promoted. <laughs> it was promoted. That's it not was... over promoted. They promoted it with one promo. Right. I mean, well, yeah, technically. I mean, but, yeah, but, I mean, you had it on every single day up to its debut, and then now, whenever the, you know, the schedule thing plays, the short one, not the not the long one, the short one, they actually mention Star Wars in it too, and that's at three a.m. and they skip um, IGPX at two thirty. No, they don't. I think so. Yeah, yeah they, they are. I, they are they? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. They, they are. Well. Um, Bunch of assholes. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, Sorry, I, Jose. I, <laughs> it's being taken by the 15 minute surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this week, yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Which yeah. we don't know what it is. I know you guys are hearing this on Monday, but we have no idea what that is. We have no idea at this time what it, it is. It is Wednesday, Thursday now. It, yeah, <laughs> I know what the um, surprise is. But uh, we can actually talk about. Uh, comparison too, because I actually have those ratings up in front of me. Okay, I, I don't. So I didn't. I didn't put them on the site yet. Um, so okay, so eat. shut up, Darrell, before I smack you. Anyways, um, <laughs> and I actually think this is nope. That is right. Okay, uh, so this is from August twenty fifth, two thousand twelve. Uh, first was Bleach at twelve, obviously, which had eight hundred and ten thousand viewers. Viewers. <laughs> Samurai <laughs> seven. 637,000 viewers, Cash and Sins, 593,000 viewers, uh, Eureka 7, 517,000 viewers, Eureka, whatever, FMA Brotherhood, 436,000, Ghost in the Shell did 433,000 on the repeat starting at 3. We need to look on phonics. It works for me. Um, <laughs> Not really. Not really, because he's... Yeah, did 529,000 viewers. Samurai 7 at 330 did 494,000. Cash and Sins at 4 did 456,000. The one that they keep making fun of me about at 430 did 461,000. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood did, at 5 a.m. did 425,000. Ghost in the Shell at 530 did 468,000. At least he doesn't Could say... Could your ass sound any more fucking... <laughs> Damn monotone, Paul. Please. Yeah, whatever. Shut up. <laughs> At least he doesn't say Eureka 7. Eureka. Yeah. Don't say Eureka, no. He's probably watching the sci fi channel and he wanted to say Eureka. No, fuck Dude, that. Dude, that show is a show. I've never watched it. <laughs> I have um, an episode of it on iTunes because it was free. So, Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Looking at the ratings, we really didn't like. They're still better than what we did last year. Obviously. And I actually yeah. think this is where we started to see it, the increase in ratings, I believe. If I remember correctly, yeah. Looking at the next ratings down, we start to see it increase in ratings as it goes on uh, last year. So yep, and we're gonna be going up and up and up and up, and that's always good. So we're getting closer and closer to when they actually go to a full schedule. So yay! It doesn't look it doesn't look like it comes up until uh, it looks like October is when it came up. So. So, the, rest of, the rest of August and well, this is the last week in August, obviously, and then uh, September will be just will be the the repeat, and then we'll start in October with comparison of the full schedule. So, anyways, uh, what 
I know we're kind of winging it here, but uh, did we, did we have another thing that we had to talk about? Um, no, we don't because we can't really talk about it because we're not going to be <laughs> recording when it happens. So, no, I mean, I know what you, it is. No, I'm just kidding. No, we had an ad- we we had something else that was on the quote unquote agenda in our minds that I'm blanking on. Well, wait, remember I said there was a Q and A on Saturday? But oh yeah, that. that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's sp- going to happen. Free plug. Go the Tumblr. <laughs> Even though this is coming out on Monday. <laughs> this is coming out on Monday, so free plug over. Oh, I thought we was going to talk about that rash that's growing on Paul's ass. Oh, and you want a paycheck. You know, if I had a, if I gave you a paycheck, I would have fired you like 500 times by now. <laughs> ah, fuck you. <laughs> You'd only fire him because he's black. Yep. Oh, Thank you, Jose. Racist. Point that out. <laughs> racist bastard you. Then he'll fire you. Then he'll fire me. Hold on, wait a minute. He can't fire me. I'm white like Jim. Oh, wait a minute. Now, Jim, the black guy, the real's the white guy, right? <laughs> I, I, you know what? Sure. I can't tell anymore. I'm colorblind. I know. It's really hard to tell between you two. You guys look so similar. Oh, my I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, I wonder I if mean, I can get along now. I mean, one of you is, like, super skinny and white, and the other one is Darrell. Oh, my <laughs> 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 All right. So, anyways. So, uh, I guess without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get into the interview. Can I be on it too? No. Hey everybody, we're back and we have a very special guest, returning champion, uh, George Christick. Say hi everybody. Oh man, that's like you're you're putting too much weight on my shoulders now. I'm gonna fail awfully. <laughs> well, you're a champion, so you can't fail. You're the best around, and no one's ever gonna take oh. you down. I have the touch. I have the power. Yeah. I can turn. Back no. time. What are we doing? <laughs> so, quiet. yeah, it, it, it just went really wrong already in the first 10 seconds. Awesome. I yes. Love it. That means it's awesome. podcast gold. Gold, I tell you. So, well, thank you guys for, for having me on again. And, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys and to your listeners. So, I'm excited. Thank you. Well, uh, no, no, no. Thank you for coming on at the last minute. <laughs> yes. Thank you for helping us out in our time of, hey, we're not going to have shows that are live for two weeks. <laughs> no, the, the stars align, so it's, it's good for everybody. Sweet. Yep. Um, so let's just get a couple things out of the way before we get into, I guess, in-depth tsunami stuff. Sure. Everybody's wondering on status reports on the following. Uh, Motor City, how, is that coming back? Or did you guys get it back from Disney? What's going on? Um, it's, it's a kind of, as we were mentioning earlier about Megas, I'm sure we'll get into that. It's a, it's a long road because we're just kind of a, a tiny independent studio and we are working with, you know, one of the, the bigger IP holders out there. So there's a lot of, uh, legal navigation and contractual issues, et cetera. Um, but we are making some slow progress. Yeah. The, the last, the last thing I heard from Chris, the creator of the show, um, was that, there was some merchandising movement. So it looks like we may be able to like put out some t-shirts uh, while the ongoing conversation happens. And I know that sounds like a very small thing, but you know, it is, it is a, a bit of a win because there is progress because usually the doors would just be closed to you as a creator, but uh, Disney is not doing that. So hats off to them that they are trying to, trying to work with us. That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. That sounds like good Shop news. Disney. Uh, yeah, other, absolutely. The other thing we got to ask about is Gonan, the five killers. Is that dead in the oh, water wow. or is that, that? Oh, that old chestnut. Wow. I thought everyone forgot about that one. Nope. Um, I always remember it. I'm still looking at that trailer. Oh, awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for remembering that one. Um, actually, there is an update uh, and it is positive. Um, recently, the creator, Eric Calderon, who is the, the guy behind Afro Samurai, he um, reached out to the company and they said that they would give him back the rights, and they're working out the deal. Um, and I think there's uh, there's some financial aspects that have to, be, have to be worked out. But they were open to letting him take the property back, uh, and take it out, and possibly redevelop it, uh, find a new format, find a network, etc. Um, so he's in the early stages of trying to put that deal together. But uh, going in is is in much better shape than you know some of our other old properties. Um, now, I, I guess this is kind of speculation because it's a little early at this point, but when you guys get going in back, would you take it to another Japanese studio or would you take it to an American one like Titmouse? Um, I think, uh, from what I understand of the deal, it would still be with, the uh, we do the production work with the, the Japanese right holders. 
um, which at the time it was Gonzo, but they dissolved. That, that was part of the rights problem. The company that actually owned most of the rights dissolved, so it was hard to actually get anyone on the phone to respond to emails because a lot of people got fired. Um, but the, the company has reformed, and I forget what it's called now. It may be Gonzo even. I don't know. Uh, it's like it's Gonzo, but it's like GDH or something like that. I, I know what you're talking oh, yeah, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Gonzo, like digital holding, something like that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So, yeah, it would be with a Japanese studio. It would be with Gonzo, but we may do some of the uh, uh, concepting out here uh, with Titmouse. That's cool. I'm glad to hear progress on that. I'm, I always like that trailer. Like, it's really cool. Thanks. Yeah, we, we love that thing. And, and uh, it was it was a strange, long, strange trip um, that uh, we got it developed. We got everything ready to go. And then the company went into bankruptcy and it kind of screwed all of us. But uh, now it, it, it's looking like it's got legs. And uh, I think the last thing I guess I have to ask about is the Versus reboot. Uh, you teamed up with, I'm going to pr- mispronounce his name, so I'm sorry, everybody. Sure. Ryohei Kitamura. Uh, very close yeah uh-huh yeah. Yuhei. Yuhei. yeah uh, um how's that coming along that that is also that's kind of in limbo uh, a lot of the projects i work on are in limbo but that's <laughs> <laughs> that's just par for the course for the industry you know for every one show or project you get picked up you have like 15 that died a slow agonizing death um and versus it's it's being uh redeveloped uh there was a uh, oddly enough a rights issue um, that is uh, still being cleared up because there was a number of different Japanese rights holders, um, as well as the creator. And, um, the last script that I worked on was close to getting greenlit, but I think, uh, some of the rights issues reared their ugly heads. So I haven't heard much about it. I think it's kind of, it's kind of in sleeper mode right now. I think things are, things are still being worked out. Well, I'm glad you haven't given up on working with Japanese studios to make stuff. I mean, I think that's really cool that uh, such such projects as Afro Samurai and, and uh, Animatrix, when those actually happen, it comes out really good. So don't give up. Keep going. Oh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. I mean, as you can tell by my, you know, my string of work, I, I absolutely love working with Japanese creators and Japanese studios. And I think they, they bring something to the narrative as well as to the execution that we lack uh, in, you know, Western you know, POVs as well as companies. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be aggressively, you know, moving forward with that kind of trying to get the East meets West, um, you know, flavor on different properties, both live action and animation. Now, uh, I guess we can start talking about Toonami stuff. I think I've gotten out of the way all the stuff I wanted to talk about that was mm-hmm. not Toonami related. Anybody else have anything to add? Um, you you had mentioned George that you um, when we had talked uh, that you had uh, that you wanted to talk about some of your upcoming projects. Um, Absolutely, whatever, yeah. But, um, whatever's coming up, go right ahead. Sure, sure. Um, so we have uh, one property I'm pretty excited about that uh, I'm developing with Nickelodeon, and um, I actually reformed the Megas team for that. Um, it's called Prodigal, and I've leaked a few images. On my Twitter, so if anyone's interesting, they, interested, they can check it out. Some of the concept uh, images, but um, it's it's kind of like, you know, what if we could do Megas now uh, with um, you know the the digital technology that we have now, um, and with your Megas team that's leveled up over the past you know eight years, both in storytelling as well as direction. So um, I have my director from Megas, Juno, who's also who also directed my episodes on Motor City. I have obviously Titmouse, and I have Chris Parnowski, who's creator of Motor City, creator of Downtown. So it's the it's the old gang back together, and we just pitched the second storyboard to Nick, and we got to get we got a really good response. So now we're going to wait on next steps, but I'm I'm pretty excited about that, um, and um, it's kind of it's it's a different fantasy. Whereas you know with Megas we played with the giant robot fantasy. This one is slightly different, and I can't really talk about the plot that much. Um, but it's it's something near and dear to us all. I think all of us anime and animation nerds. Now I've got to ask a little bit about that. Um, are are you guys taking the lessons that you learned from Motor City and uh, Megas XLR and treating the rights a little differently this time? So, you know, if the network for whatever reason decides to pull it, you can still get it back, or you maybe have a little more control over the merchandising and whatnot, or you're pretty much sticking to the same deal. <laughs> One would think we'd learn our lesson. Well. The, 
the reality is is at least when when we got this off the ground, things are changing now with the paradigm kind of being blowed up by you know Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, etc. But at the time, it was it was the old rules where if you want to get something picked up, you kind of have to sign over a lot of the rights, you know, most mm-hmm. of the rights. So for Prodigal, it's the old system. So if they want to treat us like they treated, you know, Megas and uh, Motor City, they will be legally allowed to. But hopefully it won't come to that. Uh, and we're hoping to because, you know, and, and, and at least these shows are available. Like the one thing I do have to say, unlike IGPX, which is not available, uh, Megas XLR and and uh, and Motor City, you can actually go download on iTunes at the very least. A lot of these shows, though, sometimes you think about them, they're not available at all. That's true. Yeah. So. And Downtown, which was our first show, um, you can't find anywhere, which is a shame because we we were in a good and bad way we were given enough rope to hang ourselves um and and we did we totally did but it's it's a crazy wacky funky beautiful heartbreaking show that no one can see now yeah unless you send oh god i I can't remember the dvd promotion that they that one of the creators of the show did i think was chris yeah chris chris had it up on his site um but i think that's long since gone (laughs) um and then uh the other project that I'm uh, pretty excited about is a live action project for Sci-Fi Channel called Orion, and um, it takes it takes a couple of my loves as well, and you know I'm sure loves of, of many of your listeners and uh, some of our fans. I basically took what I loved about Star Wars and what I love about Warhammer 40k and mooshed them together and pitched it as a show, and um, so we're, now we're just waiting to see if we're going to get picked up for a pilot. Um, and everyone seems pretty excited. So hopefully uh, before the end of the year is up, we'll know whether we can actually start building crazy spaceship sets and and uh, power armor or if we just go back to the drawing board. Well, I definitely wish you all the best for that because uh, sci-fi yeah. needs some quality programming. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> oh, come on. Wrestling's quality enough for them. Come on. Yeah, that's... Rest- Wrestling and Sharknado. That's all you need. Yep. <laughs> well... Let's not do Sharknado. That thing, uh, I'm sure that's going to do great on DVD. <laughs> yeah, it's already done great. It's it's done amazing for them, so hats off. Um, actually, I, I'm looking underneath Orion here. I see something called Dark Vault. Uh, can you talk oh, about yeah. that a little bit? Absolutely. That was a feature that got optioned a while ago. This was um, an idea that Chris um, uh, and and I had where we wanted to do and a, a feature anthology of horror short stories by our favorite art authors. So like H.P. Lovecraft, Poe, you know, uh, and going on from there. Um, and uh, we put together a presentation. We did a bunch of art for it. I wrote the script. It got optioned by um, the producers of Wanted. Um, and then nothing happened. So again, yet another one of those projects where... Uh, they kind of just sit there. Sometimes these things, they're like zombies. They spring back to life, um, but sometimes they just die. So no. this one, this one, I think, is probably going to end up dying, but it was a fun trip while it lasted. Is uh, Dark Fault live action, or was it intentioned to be live action? No, it was all straight animation, and oh. the idea was that we'd have like five or six interwoven uh, uh, short stories, and we would have different directors for each a segment and different designers. So it'd kind of be like Animatrix. That's cool. cool. I'm sad I'm not going to see that now. <laughs> <laughs> every I'm time. Sad too. But you never know. You yeah. never know. It, it seems like every time we bring you on, it's like, yeah, are we going to see this? Oh. So <laughs> yeah. let's get into happier days and let's start talking about Megas XLR. <laughs> oh, no, of what course. have I done? <laughs> Chaos. Um, that's yep. what you've done. That's what I've done. Yeah. So yeah. uh, I'm sure everybody wants to know if there's a status update with Megas XLR, if there's any progress. Yeah, absolutely. There, there is progress. We're moving forward slowly. Um, we are, are talking to the guy that, hold, you know, that holds the keys to the kingdom, and um, we are trying to unravel the rights issue. And it's, and it's a huge, crazy, insane spaghetti mess. Um, but the, the good thing is, the positive thing is, is that – we are talking to them. We have, you know, the the full backing of Titmouse. Tit, how, Titmouse has been awesome. Uh, Chris has been awesome. So we've all teamed up and we're trying to unravel this this mess. 
Um, and we've pitched them a few ideas on, on how we could make this work. Um, they are listening to us, but uh, the fact that they actually wrote us off uh, to balance the books and do some accounting magic on their end uh, put us in a unique state, which we may have talked about uh, before, um, where as, as it sits now legally, they cannot make uh, money on us, I think, if they broadcast us domestically. Um, but that may not uh, hold water when it comes to uh, going via, you know, the Internet. So a la what Netflix is doing, et cetera. So we're trying to we're trying to figure out uh, the business aspects and the fact that the landscape is changing so rapidly now is just making it that much more difficult. Uh, but I think there's an answer there. It just may may take a while. And, you know, n- and we might have talked about this as well. So forgive me if I'm repeating things, but none of us are lawyers. You know, none of us <laughs> are, are businessmen. Obviously, we're terrible businessmen because we sign the rights away f- for all our shows and then pay the price. But we are, we're trying to track down how to actually make something new and get the old stuff out to, to fans. Um, well, you know, anything's possible. I mean, IGPX was also written off, and thankfully the people at Toonami, because uh, IGPX is one of my favorite shows, the people right. at Toonami brought it back, you know, because it was obviously one of their favorite shows. They worked on it. So, yep. And I, yep. I think they have the same love for Mega Sex LR. I'm, I'm sure they're doing everything in their power to help you guys out. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Tsunami, uh, the people at Tsunami uh, are our fans. Uh, they've been supportive, and they're trying to figure out a way to help us work this. Um, so, you know, I can say nothing but good things about our peeps at Tsunami and Cartoon Network. Um, it's just that it's a little more complicated than just flipping a switch and saying, "All right, you're back," or you can make new episodes. Yeah, that, um, and I wish it was that easy. I know exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and and that's we're trying to find that magic switch ourselves. It's just not there. <laughs> For IGPX, I think, if I remember correctly, Jason said it took about uh, six months. But again, IGPX had a much different process since there was a Japanese studio who still had the rights to it that I think they just bought off them. So obviously it's a very different process uh, since Omega Sex Law is wholly owned by Cartoon Network. So I'm hoping they can figure something out. And I'm sure they're doing the best they can. Exactly. That's our hope. Yeah. So I know that some of the fans are like raging against uh, CN, but they shouldn't, you know, because they're they're trying to help us as much as they can. And it's the same for Disney and Motor City. OK. And I, and I think I kind of think that Mega Sex LR has actually gotten after like Jason put something up on his Twitter that one time, it kind of got this re-energized. I, I don't know what to say. Like re-energized. Like, like a second wind. Yeah, second wind, kind of, which was really yeah, weird. Absolutely. Like, it just went, it just exploded out of nowhere. That's right. Um, yeah, it does. It does. The the root cause was that uh, tweet that he sent out, um, and it kind of brought awareness back. And then there was a, a wonderful Twitter campaign created by the fans of bring bring back Megas, um, and that galvanized us. You know, basically Chris and I had a a war room meeting at Titmouse, and we're like, "Yo, man, like." The fans, the fans are really, you know, voicing their opinion, and we should try to make this happen. So it was actually, you know, thanks to thanks to that tweet, but more so thanks to the fans who, you know, emailed us, uh, IM'd us, and sent us Twitter messages, and just, you know, brought awareness out there. We're like, all right, we have we have a duty, you know, to do everything we can to bring it back, and not only that, but try to make some new episodes, which would be awesome. Yeah. So, you know, for that, we're really thankful. We're, we're so, you know, that, that kind of re-energizes us to see that we still have fans for this show that we made a while ago and that people are so passionate about it. So, now, uh, or, sorry, Paul, go ahead. Now, now speaking of uh, a show that is on Toonami currently, that is one of yours technically, I guess, um, Star Wars The Clone Wars is now on Toonami, and... I don't think a lot of people know that you were part of uh, season one and season two. Uh, would you like to explain that to people out there that don't know? Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was actually uh, I was wrapping up Megas and um, I had a, I, I bumped into a, an animation producer and she was pretty cryptic, but she was you know saying like oh you know I like your show and you got robots and it's sci-fi and would you like to meet with me about another project? And I was like yeah of course I love me some robots and sci-fi. And um, she was pretty mysterious and cagey about it. And then when I got the invite to go to the ranch, I was like, okay, uh, I think I know what this is about. <laughs> um, so 
you know, I, I had a, a lot of meetings and um, – Wait, wait, wait. Were there stormtroopers involved? Yeah. Always, <laughs> always, always stormtroopers involved. Man. There was trooper. force chokes. There were Sith. It was the whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, no, it was great. Uh, there was a great team there and I was brought in uh, immediately after Megas and I helped kind of set up the the – first two seasons and I worked with an amazing team. Um, and, uh, we had, uh, we had a very interesting, you know, um, kind of development process and cycle because it's, it was totally different from, uh, uh, my experiences with network TV because I made shows for, um, cartoon network and MTV, et cetera, but I never did it for George Lucas. So in some ways it was very liberating. Um, so it was, it was wonderful. We had a great time. Um, and we set up the, I helped set up the first two seasons and then I went to go work on Motor City. So it was, it was a great ride and being a huge Star Wars nerd, that was like a dream come true. <laughs> now, yeah. oh, sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, Paul. <laughs> we keep doing this. We keep this doing this. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, um, obviously, you know, being involved in the first two seasons of Star Wars, um, you probably had some favorite episodes. What, what favorite episodes what are your favorite episodes and what uh, episodes should you, would you suggest to fans that are just getting into the series for those, at least those two seasons? Well, obviously my episodes are the, are my favorite episodes. No, um, <laughs> there was the, there was the malevolence trilogy, which I really dug that was written by uh, my friend. Um, uh, and now I'm blanking on his name cause he's such a good friend. Um, but uh, malevolence was great. Um, and, I wrote the first part of Duel of the Droids. I really dug that one because the focus was on R2-D2 um, and, you know, making him a hero and making him much more than a sidekick. Um, so, you know, those those stand out to me. Now, uh, real quick about working on Clone Wars was coming from like you, you came from Megas, which was a 2D show going into Clone Wars. I know you're just writing it, but. Was it different at all working, you know, with a show that was 2D compared to one that was 3D? Did, did you have like a little more restrictions like, oh, we can't do this in CG or, oh, we can't do this? In yes. CG? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a great question. Yeah. they. Um, I had to be educated about writing in 3D and Dave Filoni, who was a supervising director, and Henry Gilroy, who was a story editor, they helped immensely. But basically what it boiled down to is you'd be handed a sheet and you'd have assets that were built already so it's no problem. You can use these ships and you can use these Macs, et cetera. This is no problem. But then you would have an allowance like, okay, you can have X amount of explosions because fire is hard. You can have X amount of new capital ships. You can have X amount of new like battle droids, but then the budget would run out. So you had to write with that framework in mind where in 2D you could be like, ah, just draw it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> So I, I envy the guys at the latter half of the run of the series because mostly everything was built, right? Um, but for us, it was a lot tougher. Yeah. Uh, that's actually really... I, I never thought of it that way. That You actually have to build it in CG. You can't just draw it. Um, <clears throat> I, guess, I guess my next question would be, you know, how was it working with Dave Filoni? Because uh, he, he was basically the supervising director for the whole series, Uh but I don't think he directed every episode. So what was what was kind of his role in the show? Yeah, you know, as as you said, he was the supervising director. So he was kind of the, the vision holder. He would manage the uh, other directors, and each episode would have um, individual directors. So he was kind of the go-to guy. Um, and then um, Henry Gilroy was kind of the go-to story guy. And uh, Dave Filoni, previously to Clone Wars, worked on Last Airbender. Um, and kind of, he came up through the ranks there and, and, and got his directing chops. So he was ready to go, uh, run his own show and, and run a 3d, uh, series. Cool. Now, uh, I, I don't know if you had any input on this, but whose idea was it to use the Clone Wars character designs from the Tretovatsky series in the 3d one? Yeah, I did not have input in that, but I believe that was Filoni and, uh, George Lucas together. All right. Guys, jump in if you have any other questions, because I, I have a bunch, but I want to make sure everybody kind of gets in. I was going to kind of ask, um, obviously, you know, we, we've been saying that season one, season two, did you have any say on the actual, like, movie that set up the series? No, I did not. Um, I was part of the team that was uh, 
rounding out um, those episodes. And what I mean by that is those episodes, or actually that movie, those were they were supposed to be episodes, and then I think at the last minute there was a decision to cut them together and release them as a movie. So that was part of the first season initially. So when we were kind of roughing out the season and figuring out where we were going, I was in a couple of those conversations in a few of those rooms, um, but I did not. Obviously, I didn't write those episodes. Now, going into like uh, going into the Star Wars uh, universe, obviously you had to. Obviously, we're all Star Wars fans here, right? Uh, were there any Were there any episodes where you're just like, "Hmm, I really want to write this, uh, you know, this character into the show"? Were you allowed to do that, or did Lucasfilm <laughs> and the guys in the continuity was like, "No, you can't put Han Solo in here"? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I that was like that was the first landmine I stepped on. I was like day one. I was like, I want to write the Boba Fett episode, and they were like, you know, no, <laughs> big big no no. You can't touch Boba Fett. So I yeah, I that was my first mistake. Um, and on the flip side of that question, uh, they did ask me. They were like, all right, so which character would you really like to write for? And I was like, I'd love to write for R two D two. Like he's my he's like he's my childhood favorite character. Whereas Boba Fett was like, you know, okay. I'm Mr. Cool now. I gotta like Boba Fett. Um, so they gave me they gave me the first uh, episode, you know, that I mentioned earlier that focused on R2. So I was I was really excited, and that was in many ways a dream come true. Now Disney's starting up a new Star Wars series called Star Wars Rebels. Are are you thinking about maybe jumping on the team and maybe calling David Filoni and being like, hey, I can I can write. I, <laughs> yeah, I thought I th- I thought about it for a half second. But honestly, I'm having so much fun uh, creating my own worlds now that I'd really like to focus on that uh, because I, I kind of already did Star Wars. You know, I, right. I scratched that itch um, and I've worked I've, I've played with a, a lot of other IPs um, and it's it's awesome. It's it's great playing in other people's sandboxes. But there's a, there's something much more liberating when you create your own sandbox and go, all right, blue sand, you know, no rules. <laughs> um, I can have, you know, water in my sandbox. Um, whereas when you're working in other people's sandboxes, there are a lot of rules and, and there should be right. You have to make sure that the IP is, you know, in continuity and it makes sense. And you have the burden of, you know, uh, 30 years of fans. So while those are all wonderful constraints that lead to creativity, um, sometimes you just want to say, you know, F it, I want to, you know, do it my way. Um, and you know, oftentimes you hang yourself, like we mentioned with downtown, but some other times you come up with some really cool stuff. A lot, you know, Megas, like I have to admit cartoon network was like, build whatever sandbox you want. And if you drown in it, you do. Um, and we had, we had a wonderful time with Megas. Um, so you said motor city was basically the reason you departed from, uh, clone wars. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm guessing it was just a mutual thing. Uh, but were there any episodes maybe later on into the show you were just like, man, I wish I'd stayed for that? Oh, yeah. I mean, there, was, there were episodes in, in all of the seasons where you watch them and go, man, that was awesome. But it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like that. Um, I'm trying to figure out like a good analogy. It's kind of like that bro thing, right? Because when you get a call from your friend and he's like, hey, man, I need your help on my new show, you can't say no. And that's basically what happened because uh, Chris, Chris's first show, this is Chris of Titmouse, um, was downtown, and he pulled me on there to help him. And then when I got Megas, I was like, "Hey man, I really need your help. I'm gonna screw up this show." Um, so he helped me on Megas. Um, so I owed him, right? <laughs> so when he called me, I was like, "Ah, oh, I have to, I have to do this on Motor City." But it's not like. It was a, a like a frustrating obligation. I was just happy. Like that's my old team. That's the Megas team, um, and I was happy to work with those guys. Now with the uh, with the show returning on Toonami, uh, are there are there uh, are there any things you you would like to say to the fans who are maybe new to the show? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I would say watch the show for its own merits. Right. Obviously, the burden of the, the title Star Wars can can hurt or help you. But, you know, try to look at it with fresh eyes and enjoy it for what it is. It's an ongoing story about, you know, uh, a, a hero and a villain trying to find their way in this rapidly changing universe. 
Um, and you know, it's, it's, I think it's a unique experience, especially now that you can, uh, and I'm not sure how they're going to air it, but I would imagine that it won't, you won't have to wait as long as you did, uh, between seasons and between episodes initially. So it may be more of a continuous experience. Right. The way they're airing it is basically just weekly. So it's going to come out every single week. They are skipping a couple of episodes since this is Adult Swim. They're going to be, you know, focusing more on the plot related and darker episodes. Nothing like Jar Jar Binks. I don't think he's going to show up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Jar-Jar. Oh, by the way, they, they tried to foist a, a Jar Jar episode on me in first season. I was like, I can't. Please, please don't. I, I feel sorry for that writer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel sorry for the movie. <laughs> uh let's let's talk about the positive things about star wars positivity <laughs> <laughs> probably a good thing they're skipping those episodes um yeah actually yes. I, I have a i have another question Go for um, it, man. obviously star wars started out on friday nights it, it did really well at that time slot and then i'm sure you noticed and i i, I think at that time you had well been done with season one and two by that point but they uh obviously put star wars it you know on saturday mornings my question is did that did that annoy you at all that they kind of took a show that was more like at that point getting um being like more of an i guess teenage slash adult audience rather than a kid audience that they did that that they moved it to like saturday mornings uh, no, not really, because I, I don't really take that personally, right? I'm sure they had some sort of logic to it, uh, something that worked for them. I mean, the the storylines and some of the subject matter may not have been quite appropriate for a Saturday morning audience. But again, you know, I'm not a network, you know, shot caller. So uh, I will just say, you know, fare thee well and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Um, so back to positive things about Star Wars, not bringing up the negative stuff. No, no, that's positive. That's awesome. You know, they, they know what they're doing. I don't know. Like, I, I was referring to Jar Jar. shows canceled. Oh, okay. Jar Jar. I'm, I'm always going referring back to, to Jar Jar. Always back to Jar Jar. Always back to Jar Jar. Um, so when it came to like the voice cast, obviously you guys were not going to get the actual actors. You weren't going to get Hayden Christensen and, and you and McGregor because they're off doing things that are not star wars because they lived in that universe for so long it's obvious uh did you have any input in trying to get that cast down uh or or was it this i don't maybe i don't remember this but was it the same cast from the tradovatsky uh clone Wars series uh yeah uh it was not um and no i didn't have any input into that that was more of uh you know uh filoni and um henry gilroy um they were the they were the you know uh creative voices on that aspect but usually the writers don't get much say on the the voice casting in general, uh, often because uh, the way the schedule works. By the time you're recording an episode, you are you're probably already two scripts down the line, um, and you're usually behind schedule, or you may not be on the show anymore. So yeah, usually that that uh, decision is not in your hands. So I think that kind of brings us to the end here. Um... Any final uh, any final questions before we wrap it up? Uh, I I just wondered if uh, speaking of tsunami, if you've actually been watching tsunami and what do you think now that tsunami's been out for more than a year? What do you, what do you think of this tsunami? Well, first of all, I'm I'm overjoyed that it came back, and it seemed that a lot of it was you know impetus from the fans, and I I think that's wonderful. Um, as to actually watching it, I have to admit a dirty secret that. Uh, I recently pulled the the plug on cable um, for, for a number of reasons. Seems a lot of people are doing that now. Yeah, uh, um, I'll be honest. I was one of those people before Toonami came back. I got cable simply just for Toonami. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, see, like I did that for Game of Thrones. And after the last episode, I was like, all right, pull the plug again. <laughs> um, uh, uh, one of the main reasons is just so I can write um, because I have so little time now to to write that you know, I'd rather write than watch TV, which is a sad statement. I apologize. Um, but not? yeah, so... <laughs> you so get to work to... on the shows we watch. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you get to brag. You get to read and write. What's better than that? It's TV. true. It's true, yeah. Really. No, I mean, there's some amazing TV now. It's just not being delivered via the usual devices. Um, 
And, you know, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, that the landscape is changing and it's very exciting and it's very scary. I think it's exciting for the younger people in the industry. And I think it's very scary for the older entrenched people. Um, but, you know, these opportunities are where we're going to try to go with these new properties and old properties. Like, I'd love to say, like, hey, um, Amazon, help me get the rights to Megas. Let's do new episodes. Like, that may be a possibility. I don't know. Or, you know, hey, hey, Valve, let's figure out a, a Megas game, you know. So th- these are all the things that we're kind of talking about, and we don't know what the realities are, but we're excited. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, the big example is Arrested Development coming back to Netflix, which, you know, I'm super excited about. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Th- those Netflix kinds of shows. needs its own show. <laughs> they do. It's called House of Cards. Go watch it. It's really good. <laughs> and, More and, shows. And, well, actually, Drama, speaking about broader television, because I have noticed this trend, it seems like a lot of writers and directors want to go, and I, I'm included in that. I, I'm editing, I want to go into television, not so much movies. Uh, a lot of people really want to flock to television now because it seems like the more mature stories, the more, you know, the, the, the better writing, it seems like, is coming out of television, not so much the cinema anymore. Uh, just your general thoughts on that. I mean, because. No, that, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's, that's your, you hit the nail on the head. That's a very astute observation, and that's absolutely true. Uh, the thing is that for a feature film, you have at most, what, two hours with an audience? Um, Free if you're Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Peter Jackson can do that. No one else. Um, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but with television, you have hours and hours and hours to um, set up the the theme, you set up the characters, set up the conflicts, um, and you know tell really deep, subtle stories. Um, whereas you know just the format and the expectation of feature films these these days do not allow for it. You know. Uh, mostly there's some indie films and there's a few dramas out there. Uh, whereas, you know, I think some of the best, you know, narrative storytelling that's coming out is, is TV. It's like breaking bad or game of Thrones or, you know, a house of cards, etc. Um, and people are, are, are allowing these creatives to take risks in ways that they've never done before. And also that they cannot do in an hour and a half, two hours. Now let's bring that definition to a little, uh, little more of a niche i mean let's let's just bring it to animation at this point you know uh with toonami with adult swim with all these you know it does seem like animation especially 2d animation is moving to and and anime i include that too to television not so much movies anymore um is it sort of just the same philosophy there or is it just it makes more sense for animation to be on television uh because animation and cinema is just so expensive because it's all 3D CG at this point. Yeah, I think I think that aspect blocked a lot of animation from getting uh, to features. I think the other, there's this mentality, um, and this is something that I've hit my head against. There's, um, there's a thinking in Hollywood that uh, animation is for kids and... If, if you try to go outside of that realm, it's really hard, actually impossible to get things made. Um, so that has kind of stopped a lot of projects dead in their tracks. For instance, uh, Dark Vault, which is a animated horror anthology feature. And they were just like, what? How about some funny talking, you know, animals? <laughs> um, that's what they want, you know? Um, so I think domestically, at least, that's that's the problem that... Uh, creators and animators have been facing for a while now. Well, here's hoping that it changes, and I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, George, thank you so much for joining us. We know your time is very limited, and we're trying to get you out of here on time. No, of course, as is yours. You guys all have lives and uh, um, responsibilities, so I really appreciate you guys uh, letting me rant at you for a bit. And by the (laughs) way, George, if you come up with a series that you think would fit Toonami, please... Please pitch it. <laughs> well, if, yeah, if someone suggested this on Twitter. Um, if Prodigal doesn't go to Nick to take it to Toonami, and, and trust me, that'll be the first <laughs> that thing me. I'm pounding on. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Okay, see, I knew it. I knew it. And so. me. Pitch it to and us no. first, and then pitch it to them. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Actually, real, real quick aside, uh, that's not out of the realm of possibility, if you think about it, because we actually had Shinichiro Watanabe, the director of Cowboy Bebop, pitch us a show and he was like go tell adult swim about it and we're like okay 
That's awesome. Dude, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> what happened with that? Is it still going on? Oh, yeah. They actually did show it to Adult Swim. Um, and we're like, do, do it, do it, do it. So it's still going. Space Dandy, it's called. It comes out next year. Awesome. Free Bad plug ass. for Shinichiro Watanabe. <laughs> awesome. Well done, guys. Well, I'm pitching to you next time. Forget this, like, uh, you know, Disney and Cartoon Network business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Straight we won't give off. you money, but yeah, we'll listen. <laughs> what, you think they gave me money? Come on. Oh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that hurt. That's a podcast edit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm leaving that in. That's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, if we get you in trouble, I'll see. I'll be like, I took his voice over and uh, and just made it <laughs> no. sound like that. <laughs> oh, that good. I'm that good. All said editing, in good guys. fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, thank you again, and uh, we're we're gonna bring it back to the podcast. Right on. Thanks, guys. Be well. And that was our interview that we totally just came back from. We did this in sequential order, I swear, not the magic of editing. And I I got George at the last minute, so thank you, George. Yes, really big thanks go out to George Christick for coming on the show and having a great time with us. We always have a great time. Uh, awesome. We hope to see you at a con one of these days. Yes, that would be great. Go to Anime about- Expo. You know what? I'm going to Anime Expo. I'll see you there. Go to the Expo! Wrestling reference! Yeah! Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Go to New York Comic Con. Yeah. No, he's, Shut on, up, he's on the West Coast, man. Poor guy. I know, right? Oh, by the way, if you go to Anime Expo, you should just take Sketch with you. I should, because he's in, well, he is our, our West Coast. Yes, he's the only person on our crew on the West Coast. Um, I want to say, oh, uh, yeah. Anime yes. Savior's over there, too, I believe. He is? I believe Maybe. so, yes. Oh, well, we'll have a meetup and no one will show up. <laughs> I'm not bitter about that. Yeah, um, maybe you, that's maybe mean, if the guys. black guy goes, it'll be cool. Oh God, Jose's still sore about that. I'm not bitter about I'm it. Little, I would be I'm too. A, I'm a little sore about that actually, because a lot of people, if eh, never mind. Anyway, time, time to sign up. Uh, time to sign up. <laughs> yeah, sign up for up. the next meetup. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> time to sign off. Uh, let's get the fuck out of here. Seriously. Yeah. I want to go watch Ghost in the Shell rise. Oh, you want to feel campy? Oh, okay. No, he just wants to feel a rise in his pants. I do. <laughs> <laughs> which Jeez. makes him which makes him feel campy. Exactly. Which is awesome. Anyways. Yeah, you can't make me feel bad about Ghost of Shell Rise. You just can't. I don't care what flaws it has. I'm gonna love that show. Alright, Jarrell, where can they find you? You can find me at Ukami underscore samurai seven at twitter.com or you can tumble with me at Ukami Samurai dot dot com. Or you can just email me at derailmatix at tunemommyfaithful dot com. Daniel, so nice. Daniel? You can find me on Twitter at zero gamer, and you can tumble in with me at zero gamer dot twitter dot. Oh, whoa! Damn, you can't even <laughs> talk, man. Damn. Did you, you really wait, 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 whoa, whoa! Did you drink some of Darrell's booze? Probably. Uh, what did I zero fucking gamer. tell you about that? What did I fucking zero. tell you about that? <laughs> dot com. Remember, no t- alcoholic conventions. You have to be sober. <laughs> Jose. Um, what? I'm dead serious. No drinking. <laughs> yeah, Jose. Yeah. Yeah, Jose. Actually, I'm trying to think. Did I drink anything at Otakon? Was I so hammered that I don't remember what I drank? <laughs> yes, you were. Say, no, I'm I kidding. I actually say, didn't. I'm so, gonna... I'm so sad about Otakon that I, I didn't actually have anything to drink. I think I had if one I there, thing. I, I was going to uh, say uh, that Saki does not count. I don't think we're going to get much Saki, alcohol. Saki, of course, counts, but I didn't even have that. No, see, if Darrell was at Otakon, you would have been drinking. I would have, but it just... <laughs> Jim is a terrible a... drinking partner. There, oh. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jim, you rock. Love you, Jim. Don't hurt him. Um, go ahead, Jose. <laughs> uh, oh, it's my turn. That's right. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, so... You can follow me at J-E-A-R-G-U-M-E-D-O. Expect the Twitter account to be very, very quiet these next couple of weeks, as I will probably not have internet. Um, <laughs> so, enjoy. And, and your phone will get charged a lot of money if you use it internationally. Yeah, I should use it, though. Maybe you should dance around the sombrero, and you'll get into oh, I'm not Mexican, you asshole. 
god. Anyways, continue, Jose. I'm sorry. Um, and you can also follow me on Tumblr at Tsunami Tsunami Faithful Official. <laughs> Tumblr dot com. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! We um, have everything. No, you can actually follow me personally. There are boobs on my blog now, uh, and a bow tie. At uh, J E A R G U M E D O dot Tumblr dot com. Uh, and you can email me all your hate mail that I will not receive while I'm overseas at J E A R G U M E D O at Tunami Faithful dot com. I'm trying to remember like anything that I need to plug. Uh, and Jerry Gelp. We want it. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah. We might as well continue that. We might as well do that. So that means it's time to be serious. No jokes. Uh, for those of you that have not heard, Jerry Gelb needs spinal surgery in his neck. So we are running a little donation uh, giveaway, if you will. For 25 bucks, you can pick the topic and we'll talk about it on this show. For 50 bucks, you get to pick the topic and come on this show. For 100 bucks, you send it to us. You get to pick the topic, come on the show. And if you send it to Steve Bloom, he will go ahead and do a little voiceover for you. No questions asked. Um, and basically, the way this works is you just got to send me a screenshot. Uh, you go to tinyurl.com slash jerrygelb. That's T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash J-E-R-R-Y-G-E-L-B. You pay your money. You donate what you can. And anything is anything is great. Uh, even if it's not to receive one of the awards, if all you can donate is a buck, donate. Um, so you donate your, your uh, money. And take a screenshot. It can be a crappy cell phone pic. It can be an actual screenshot. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a screenshot. No credit card information, please. Send it over to J-E-A-R-G-U-M-E-D-O at ToonamiFaithful.com. And I will go ahead and get you on the show. We have about two people waiting in the wings right now. Uh, and we will try to get to you guys soon, probably when we get back. Oh, and also, those of you that won the music video contest real quick, all your information is with Jose. But since he's going out of the country... It's probably going to be a couple weeks, so we yeah. apologize about that. But you will get your prizes, we promise. If I don't, um, if I don't get them in by didn't Friday, we say we would be delivering them by September anyway. <laughs> no, we said after Otakon. It's way after. Yeah, Otakon. but but see what happened was is he had to go to AFO. But anyways, continue, Jose. I'm sorry. So and now I'm going out of the country. Uh, so here's the deal, guys. With the with the prizes, if I can't get them out by Friday, just I'm sorry. I'm really yeah, really sorry. Um, but I, I will email you if I can't get them out. Uh, and last but not least, I think that's it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. And you could find me. Oh, wait, wait. One shameless plug. Yes. One shameless plug. It will be out by the time this podcast is out and you guys can't say anything. (laughs) Please check out the one piece podcast panel at Otakon. Me and Jim recorded the whole thing. It was produced by the Tsunami, uh, f- sorry, by the One Piece podcast in association with us and Adult Swim Central. So please check it out on YouTube, probably before this podcast goes up. So go check it out, and you guys can't say anything. Oh, I'm totally going to say something. No, seriously, you can't. I will kill you. <laughs> say anything. <laughs> we'll um, cancel the podcast. Yeah. Okay. See anyway. Um, so you can find me at Paul Pascrillo on Twitter. Uh, my last name is spelled P-E-S-C-R-I-L-O. You can also find me on Tumblr at that name, Paul Pascrillo at tum- Tumblr.com. Uh, you can also find me on another podcast, because I'm going to start plugging this. Um, Two Strangers, One Podcast. And Spanky Ham does a corn roll. <laughs> Two Strangers, One Podcast.com. You can find me there. And you can also find me uh, Facebook.com slash uh, Two Strangers, One Podcast. Um, check it out, guys. It's a pretty good show. Uh, the, the two shows that I've been on so far have been pretty good, so... Um, yeah, you I still, disagree. That first a... one, that first one, you got a lot of stuff wrong. Uh, anyway. I'm still going to bust your balls about that. Yeah, anyway. That's right, bust his balls about it. He yeah, likes anyways. that. <laughs> so, you look forward to seeing me on some more episodes, because, uh, uh, you know, we've been doing a good job. We've been having some good chemistry, so we're going to be some roster in New York in your house, okay? There you go. Because he doesn't and, like um, our show anymore. No, I like yeah. you guys. Just so it leaves me to um, nah, nah, bitch, you off the show now. Nah, fuck you. <laughs> so this and... is the last time Paul will be on the show. <laughs> so, okay. Bye, Paul. And Daniel will take his place. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. No, that's not even funny. <laughs> no. Like I'm not laughing. Daniel, get off the show. Oh. Uh... And um, as always on the website, Paul, don't leave me. 
I won't. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Uh, on a serious note. <laughs> on a serious note, let's actually end this show. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> on, on, <laughs> on the actual site, ToonamiFaithful.com, uh, free plug for us. Um, you can find me under the username TFAdmin. I do go on there every once in a while. so No one likes you, though. And now that my job is kind of slowed down, I probably will be on there more, especially uh, hating on Darrell, telling him how much of a drunk he is. But anyways. Hey, uh, I'm proud of that, bitch. Yeah, about that. Anyways, Your mother uh, listens to this podcast. You remember that, right? Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's a good voice. <laughs> God damn it, man. Why the fuck you got to remind me of this shit? You know what? That's it. I'm gonna call your mom, and we're gonna have we're gonna have a sit down. We're with gonna you. we're gonna stage an intervention over Skype. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> you know what? Yo's interventions always fail. Yeah, especially since especially. <laughs> I, oh my god! Side note: We tried to do one when Vic Mignogna was on the show. It didn't work out so well. Uh, no, it didn't. Yeah, it really didn't work. So, no. by the way, Vic so- Mignogna is gonna be on Ancast this week. So, free plug for those assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. That's mean. <laughs> no, I lo- no, I uh, I'm so okay. Real quick, I actually really love the Endcast guys. I had a lot of fun with them at the Otacon panel that they did, and I'm so sad no one will ever hear that episode. Probably not as sad as they are because they had no episode for a week. Oh, lost in the net. No, lost in. Hey, there's no waveform. Hey, oh. th- that means there's no audio. Oh, you mean uh, lost in uh, compression? <laughs> Lost in, lost in, hey, we spoke into these microphones. Hey, this computer didn't record anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lost in uh, audio. So <laughs> That sucks. Yeah, I know. And it sucks, too, because they get way higher ratings than us, so my plug went unheard. <laughs> Damn. All right. Well, guys, we have more com- more content to come. We have more things that we're trying to do. And, of course, we have New York Comic Con coming up. So Please stay tuned. Us. Stay, make sure you follow Geeky Inc. at Twitter. And this is the podcast. Peace. We're out. Deuces. Donate. Fucking piece of shit. Bitch. Slut. Could you all shut up? Thank you.